You know what's the worst compliment you and I could get as a salesperson? We're going to talk about that today. I'm Patrick with your host of Valuetainment. In the world of sales, we hear a lot of different compliments, lots of different compliments. People want to say to reference a person being an incredible salesperson. You know, one of the compliments could be, it's probably the famous one you've heard before. You know, this person could sell ice to an Eskimo, right? We've all heard this one before. Let me give you some modern ones maybe you haven't heard before. Some we'll have fun with. You know, this person could sell um, newspaper to a blind man. <laughs> this person could sell underwear to a nudist. He could sell, uh, 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 he could sell cape to Superman. He could sell a cage to a lion. He could sell Obamacare to a conservative. He could sell, you want me to stop? I mean, we hear all these different lists of things that this person could sell to. All that person is saying is they're trying to say, hey, you could sell anything to everybody, right? And when you really break down what that statement really means, here's what that statement really means. To me, if I was to take the, inter although it's a compliment, if I was to really take that interpretation, so... A person doesn't sit there and say, I could sell anything to everybody. When you hear somebody say, I could sell anything to everybody, that's not somebody I like to recruit to my sales force. I'll explain to you why. Um, can you imagine if a person could sell anything to everybody? We put him in front of a congregation of a Christian church. He could convert anything, anybody into Christianity. Then you put him the next day into a Muslim uh, mosque. He could convert anybody into Muslim. Uh, you put him the next day into an LDS church. He can convert anybody into Mormonism. Next day in Jehovah, he can convert anything to Jehovah, anybody into Jehovah. Seven day. <laughs> Atheist, agnostic, because he's an incredible salesperson, right? Incredible salesperson. In the world of business, if there's anything I could tell you that as a salesperson you don't want to brag about, is you don't want to brag that you can sell anything to everybody. You know what's, what's the one thing I don't like to see on a resume? Uh, here's what I don't like to see on a resume. If I see this, I don't hire this person. If I see on the resume that this person has sold 20 different products, my number is five generally. If he sold five different products over the last 20 years, he's going to sell another five products in the next 20 years. If he sold five in 10 years, he's going to sell five in the next 10 years. This is a person that one day they're selling cars, the next day they're selling insurance, another day they're selling real estate, another day they're selling pharmaceutical sales, another day they're selling you know, toothpaste, another day they're selling coffee, this other day they're selling travel, another day they're selling this. Every day there's something else. They're great salespeople and they can convince you, but they're great salespeople. I prefer a true believer over a hundred salespeople any day of the week. Let me explain you the difference. You see, a true believer could come in and he doesn't look like a salesperson. He's a regular guy. A true believer could come in and the different questions that will be asked be between a true believer and a salesperson is this. A true believer is going to say, tell me how this product benefits our clients. Tell me why our product is better than XYZ. Tell me why our company stands for something better than XYZ. Tell me what makes us so special. Tell me what makes us this. Oh, and by the way, how do we get paid on these products again? Here's a salesperson. Um, how do we get paid on these products? Oh, by the way, what, what, what is it anyway? What's the products again? <laughs> what are you guys selling again? What, what, what's, uh, what's the pro? Okay, that's all it is. I just need to know the basic stuff. I can go sell it to anybody. That's great. I'll take the true believer. You know why? Because I can't replace the true believer's heart, who believes in a company, who believes in a cause, who believes in a product. You cannot, you cannot break a true believer. Anybody can break a salesperson with a better compensation plan. Anybody can break a salesperson with a better, you know, uh, uh, any, all that other stuff. Anybody can break a salesperson with that. You can't break a true believer. A true believer, give me one true believer over 100 salespeople any day of the week. Because I'm going to put my time into these sales folks. They're going to go sell another product, another product, another product, another product. All my hours I put went to another product. If I sit there and develop a true believer... You better believe 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, the company is being ran by a true believer. The company is being ran by a true believer because he believes the company, the product, the cause. What you represent is what the true believer uh, uh, represents. Now, what will be an example of both? Let me give you examples of both. What's a true believer? What's a salesperson? 
Um, a salesperson is, as an athlete, somebody who comes in and after his biggest contract he gets, his best days are behind him, a.k.a. Andrew Bynum, for those of you guys that follow basketball. A true believer could be a guy like Derek Fisher, who's going to fight for you till the end. He believes in your organization. He believes in your cause. Everything about him is real. In the locker room, he gives his best. He may not be your best player, but he's a true believer. And you take Derek Fisher out of the Lakers, they don't have a lot of championships because he was the only guy that knew how to speak to Kobe in the locker room. That's a true believer. A salesperson could be a politician. He can get up in front of any audience, African-American, white, Hispanic, Asian, Christian, Catholic, Muslim, conservative, Republican, liberal. It doesn't matter. He can get in front of any audience because he's a politician. He can agree with your points to get your vote because he's a politician. And politicians typically, they take the high road, you know, they kind of want to agree with everybody so they don't make any enemies. It's actually a good power uh, 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 position that you have, but it's not a true believer. You know what a true believer is? A true believer gets up and he talks and she speaks and 50% of the audience disagrees. A statesman gets up and says, here's what I believe in. This is what you voted me in for and fights for that thing that he or she went in for. That's a statesman. A statesman is a JFK, a Reagan, a Lincoln. That's a statesman. Politician, I don't need to give you any names. There are plenty of them on both sides in politics, politicians. You know, the difference between a salesperson and a, 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 a true believer when it comes down to mandating woman. A salesperson is a man that'll say anything to get you into bed with them. And not, I'm not talking again to bed to take a nap with them. You know what I'm talking about. A, a, a true believer is going to tell you who he is, what he stands for. He's going to ask you a lot of questions about you, what your family stands for, uh, what you're all about, what's important to you. Because a true believer has no desire of just getting you into bed. A true believer wants to build a long-lasting relationship and family with you. And if those questions are intimidating to you, when you meet a man like that or a woman like that, you're probably not in the true believer department. And if you find somebody like that, you better realize that person is for real. Uh, the more and more you meet with them. So I can go on and on and on, give you a lot of examples of, you know, uh, uh, what a difference between a salesperson and a true believer is. So my message to you would be this. Here's what my message to you would be. One, if you run a company, you run an organization, make a list of your true believers. Whoever your true believers are of you who believe in you, who are aligned with you, who believe in your company, who believe in a product, who believe in a cause, and they're true believers, like when you talk to them, you really know they believe in what the organization is all about. You better believe you got to put your time into these folks because these are the folks that are going to run the entire company for you one day. The true believers are not doing this for the heck of it. They automatically attract money because people want to do business with true believers. And for yourself to take inventory of yourself, make a list of things you've done in the last five to 10 years. If you've done multiple things in the last three to five years, you're not in the true believer department. I know most people don't want to hear that. You're just not. But if you sit down and you make a list and you notice you're one in the last five years, that's good. See if you can go 10, 15, 20 years. One message, one company, one cause, one movement, one industry. The longer you go, you're a true believer. You know what happens to a true believer with work ethic? Where it comes from here, not just from here, here and here. When it comes from here and here, you're going to attract a lot of true believers. You're going to attract a lot of salespeople. You'll attract every kind because when people look at you in the eyes, they see a true believer. And people like following true believers. But you also know you're going to have enemies, and that's okay. For every one enemy or 10 enemies or 50 enemies or 100 enemies that you have, a handful of true believers will compensate all, overcome all, all the enemies you're going to create. You're going to be okay. But history favors true believers. History doesn't favor salespeople and politicians. It favors statesmen. It favors true believers. That's my message to you. My challenge to you would be to go out there and look for your true believers and put your time into your true believers. And two, work on identifying yourself as a true believer and do one thing for 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And look what will happen to you both financially, business-wise, life-wise, reputation in the community. When your name comes up, they say, what's he selling now? Salesperson. Oh, him? Oh, he's been selling one thing for the last 15 years. That's a true believer. It's my message of the week to you. By the way, if you have any other one-liners that I didn't cover, I'd love to hear some of the funny ones you got on the bottom. 
And if you got some true believers on your team that you work with, be sure to share this video with other true believers. Thanks for watching and please be sure to subscribe on the bottom.